Pamela Palmiter is an Aboriginal activist. She joins us now in our studio in Toronto. I know you're just off the plane from Ottawa, so thanks a lot for joining us today. No problem. So first of all, what do you think about the meetings? Well, um, nothing came of those meetings. It was a meeting between Prime Minister and the Assembly of First Nations, not a nation-to-nation -nation meeting between the Prime Minister, Governor General, and all First Nation leaders. And the result of that was we didn't get anything. There was no commitments for anything. So what happens is both Canadians and grassroots First Nations people lose out of this because what the whole reason why this movement was sparked was the legislation which was very damaging to lands and waters. It was the crisis of social conditions in our communities and to deal with the treaty relationship. And you essentially got a promise of more meetings. Mm -hmm. What are the, what's the biggest issue, do you think? Is it uh, resources and the sharing of wealth? Well, it's really, first and foremost, it's about the protection of the lands and waters in this country for both First Nations and Canadians so that we actually have a future. If the lands are contaminated or the waters are contaminated, we don't have much of a future. So that's ultimately um, the biggest threat. Uh, because of the legislation, but then when you think about it, it's also about sharing the lands and resources in this country so that First Nations can be self-sustaining and so that Canadians have resources protected here for their future generations instead of being sold off to foreign countries. Pamela, what do you think the next step should be to help repair the relationship between First Nations and the government? Well, I think there has to be some real commitment to have uh, you know, to deal with the legislation, clearly this is a concern to First Nations and all Canadians, but also to have a, a commitment to deal with the urgent crisis. We're high-level meetings, uh, you know, ongoing dialogue and a promise to listen to demands isn't going to do anything for the people that live without housing, water, education, infrastructure, and all of those things. So there's got to be some mechanism, some way in which the government can make that kind of commitment, put some good faith on the table so that future meetings will have some benefit. Uh, Chief Spence is continuing with her solid food hunger strike. Mm -hmm. How effective do you think it's been? The hunger strike? Well, here's the way I see it, because each of our nations across the country have very different cultures and traditions, so we all come at these kinds of things differently. But for, for Chief Spence, what she's doing is she's symbolizing what's happening to First Nations across this country. So every day that she stays on, on her fast, she's slowly dying. Her body will slowly weaken and die. That's exactly what's happening to First Nations all across the country when you think about the, the loss of life from suicide and murder to missing indigenous women and then the less of a lifespan that we have by upwards of 20 years because of things like contaminated water, food insecurity, lack of education and employment. And so it, it really symbolizes what this whole struggle is about. We really need some justice back in Canada. The Idle No More protests uh, are continuing even though they have mm -hmm. met with uh, Prime Minister Harper. Yeah. What is their next move in all of this? Well, I mean, the, the Idle No More movement is, is really huge now. And I have, have said before that what this Idle No More movement is about is different things to different people. So for some First Nations, they might be very happy that a meeting took place. Uh, for a large number of other First Nations and grassroots people, um, they're clearly not happy because nothing came of it. For the people that are manning these protests, they're the ones on the front lines. They're the ones who have their children put in you know, foster care. They're the ones with murdered and missing Indigenous women women and nothing came out of that meeting. So I think what you're going to see is an actual ramping up of activities to show that nothing has changed. Nothing came out of this meeting for the people and it's the people who brought this movement forward. So I think they're going to have to sit down and, and really think about what are the next steps as between the government and First Nations because clearly a meeting between the Assembly of First Nations and the Prime Minister didn't cut it. A huge spotlight was cast on Attawa um, mm -hmm. and has anything changed there? Well, I think if you were to go and interview any of the, the members of Attawapiskat First Nation, you're going to find out that they still have a massive housing waiting list. They still have, you know, problems with with water and, and sanitation, and not just Attawapiskat. There's about 130 other communities, many of them northern First Nation communities, in the exact same crisis. Or look at the flooded communities in Manitoba. I mean, the, the crisis is increasing in this country. If you look at over the last 20 years, all of the socioeconomic conditions for First Nations have gotten worse. Right. Yet Indian Affairs' sole mandate is to improve the, the health and well-being of First Nations in this country, and they've failed. Pamela Palmatier will have to leave it there. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your insight. We appreciate it. Thanks.